Pitchers duel so far through two innings. Alden, very interesting player on the Rutgers roster, listed as an outfielder, but she's returned to her home and left this season, but in the past two years, she started 36 games at short, 26 at third. She's even been behind the plate for four games as the starting catcher for Jay Nelson. First pitch to her misses for a ball. She's batting 189 on the season. Things have 10 runs batted in. A pair of doubles and a triple. That one misses outside. Alden thought about it. He's able to hold up. 2-0. Yeah, Mike, look at Valdivia widening the plate as much as possible. That one flied into right. Jorgensborg coming in, makes the diving catch. One away. Great job by Brianna Jorgensborg. Jorgensborg certainly earning more time out there in right field. What an amazing catch. Let's take another look at it here. As you'll see her racing up on top of the ball. It was falling fast. And I think it confused her a little bit, but she was able to adjust very nicely. One out for Casey Madden. Madden, the Rutgers catcher. Takes a call and strike. Madden batting 152 on the season. A lot of times, Mike, especially with the wind, as it is blowing very hard today, it's tough to gauge when that ball is going to drop in front of you, when it's hit right at you like that. And Jorgensborg adjusted very nicely. That one misses high for a ball, one and one. Casey Madden, a freshman out of Saratoga, New York, looks at a ball. Two one, a called strike of the outside corner brings it even. Two balls, two strikes. That's a, a consummate pitch, pitcher's pitch for Jody Valdivi around the outside corner, running across the plate, but untouchable for Madden. Here's the two two, swing and a miss. Strike three, two away. Madden was very behind that pitch. Valdivia was able to get that one up to her maximum of 63, 64 miles per hour. But she's She's most on and most consistent when she's able to mix up her speeds. And Dana Gumpf had said that she didn't really do that much on Tuesday, which was one of the reasons why she was hit. And of course, that's something that's not very common against Judy Valdivia, especially this season. First pitch to Lindsey Curran misses away for a ball. Curran, the nine hole hitter, batting 104. Another New Jersey native. Rutgers does an amazing job of recruiting in its backyard. One fouled up into the stands, one and one. Irish have two Garden Staters. And that one fouled down the third baseline. Alexa Maldonado, Brittany O'Donnell, both natives of the state of New Jersey. Maldonado is only about 40 miles from Piscataway where Rutgers is situated. And I'm not an East Coast guy, but can you get much further than 40 miles away in New Jersey? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a born and bred Midwesterner, so that, that's pretty much the same city if you're 40 miles away. <laughs> <laughs> that pitch in the dirt brings it even, two balls, two strikes. All you Midwesterners think that the East Coast is bottled within about two hours. I live in Philly. Oh, you can be in Boston <laughs> in about an hour and a half, right, Mike? Yeah, of, oh, of course, yeah. The 2-2, flied into right, Jorgensborg going back right in front of the track, makes the catch, and that will retire the side. Once again, the Scarlet Knights go down in order. In the middle of the third, Notre Dame and Rutgers scoreless. Do up for the Irish, Brianna Jorgensborg, Alexa Maldonado, then back to the top of the order for Sadie Pitzenberger. Jorgensborg getting a lot of work in right field. Already with five putouts here through three innings. 
a scintillating catch in right field, and of course she leads off the next inning. Very common in softball. First pitch misses low and in for a ball. This is away as well. Jorgensborn can really use something to get her going at the plate, batting only 107, but this only her 13th start of the campaign. It comes going to get her in a lot more now that Aaron Maroon's out, and they have to mix up the order. That one grounded through the hole. It's short. It'll be a base hit for Jorgensborg. Second hit of the ball game for the Irish. One on, nobody out for Alexa Maldonado. I'm Eddie. See what Gump puts on here. In a close game like this, most likely a bunting situation. Maldonado tries to slap it towards the left side, but fouls it off. Jorgensborg was going with the pitch. 0-1 to Pittsburgher. Pittsburgher comes in, batting 333. He's got 14 runs batted in on the season, slugging 603, which is a lot for a nine hole hitter. Maldonado had two home runs in that Toledo series last week, and also a double off the base of the wall in center field. Butter. Total for homers to three, or total for doubles to four on the season. You see Jay Nelson head out to the circle to have a word with Nicole Lindley. The one to Maldonado, she takes it. It was in at her feet. One and one. The Irish center fielder steps back in. The lefty looks at this one, puts it back up the middle. It gets through. Jorgensborg will round second, head for third. Maldonado will stay put at first base. And the Irish with runners on the corner, nobody out. Finally, the Irish have a rally here in the bottom of the third inning. Maldonado was all over the plate on that swing and was able to just will it past the second baseman for Rutgers, sprawling out. And of course, Deanna Gump, unlike at Loyola Chicago with the turf outfield, is certainly gonna send the runner from second base there. And so Jorgensburg ends up at third, Maldonado at first. Runners on the corners, nobody down for Pittsburgh. First pitch way outside, there goes Maldonado. They run the cutoff play with the second baseman. Harbedian comes in to take, take the throw. Very difficult pitch for Madden to be able to handle and toss it all the way down to second base. And you saw the second baseman flip it out to Bragg to make sure Maldonado didn't do much off after that. That one right back up the middle. The runners are going to have to stay put. Sandy Pittsburgh knows that was the only place she couldn't hit it. But either way, it's an out. Runners at second and third, one out for Katie Flurry. And still, Pittsburgh almost beats this out. They get her by a half Here's step. Very close play over at first Katie base. Flurry. Anywhere else, and most likely either Pittsburgh is safe or at least the run scores. First pitch to Flurry, called strike over the outside corner, 0-1. Flurry was also on her game against Loyola on Tuesday. It was one for two, a single to right. That one misses high and tight as Flurry ducks out of the way, one and one. Here you go, Fleur. Gump says she's a very resilient player. She'll make mistakes and do things wrong, but she's a very balanced player. Going to make offensive mistakes, but then make up with them with her glove work, and she realizes that as a player and as a leader on this Irish team. Two and one to Flurry. Flurry doubled. She had the first hit of the ball game, and until this frame, that was the only hit for either team. That one misses away for a ball. Three and one now to Flurry. And you do have a little bit of room, but I'm not sure you want to load the bases for Heather Johnson. And behind her, Christine Lux. This is just more trouble and more trouble for Jay Nelson. I, I can't imagine this is even close to an intentional walk as that one misses four ball four. Lindley trying to throw the change up and I think she thought she had it for a strike. But either way, Flurry trots down to first. Bates is loaded for Heather Johnson. Yeah, that, that's a close pitch. I'm not sure it was wrong there, but it's certainly borderline. It's not something that she could expect to get from a home plate umpire. Now Heather Johnson for punishment. Back up the middle, that one's gonna get through. One run will score. 
Maldonado rounds third. She will score, and it's a two-run single for Heather Johnson. Heather Johnson, all she had to do was hit it with some sort of velocity into the infield, and as long as this gets past Lindley, you know it's an RBI and probably two with the grass out in the outfield. There's no way that Mullen Heights going to be able to throw Maldonado out from second base. Not even close at home. Heather Johnson with RBI's number 33, 34 on the season. The Irish will lead it 2 nothing, and they've still got something going here as Christine Lux steps to the plate and takes a ball. On the ground. Come on, Lux. Who else would you want up if you're Deanna Gump? This is the 17th All-American in Irish history. That one misses high, 2 and up. Lux, the program's career home run leader. She's second on the team this season with nine behind Heather Johnson's 10. Mike, what an athlete she is. Just 12 varsity letters in high school, unheard of. Dash ballet for 10 years. Now 3-0 to Lux. And what's great about Lux is not only is she a home run hitter, she's a good scrappy hitter when she has to be. You, you see her up there, she's out over the plane, she's just trying to make contact as she sends that one high into left field. Mackenzie Alden underneath it just does make the catch. The runners will stay put. There's two away. As we were saying about Lux, generally she's a, she's a good two-strike hitter. In addition to being a good power hitter, she's up there. She's just trying to make contact. That time I think she might have been trying to do a little bit too much and was a little behind that pitch as she sent it the opposite way. Like anywhere else, she gets the runner up from second base at least. First pitch to Danny Miller misses away for a ball. One and up. Miller rolled one back to the pitcher, Lindley, in her first at bat. In her career, one for two against Lindley. The hit was a double. That one swung on. Miller tried to check her swing and just couldn't do it. And she actually, I think, got her hands to stop, but couldn't stop her body from rotating through. One and one. So many times hitters seem to, to have made up their mind before the pitch is even thrown. I want to call it strike over the outside part of the plate, I guess. It was it was pretty close, and I think Miller was saying that to Deanna Gump, who encouraged her to just get right back in the batter's box. One and two to Miller. Lindley winds and fires. That one fouled off towards the Irish dugout. Remains one and two. These are huge pitches coming up here for Lindley because she can't afford to see your team fall down any farther than they already are. That one fouled down the right field line. That will just get out of play over in the little cage where the tarp rests. Right beyond the Rutgers bullpen. Runners retreat. One and two to Danny Miller. This is a situation where Lindley just needs to put the bandage on it. That one misses high and away for a ball, two and two. That's a good waste to it, too. And Danny Miller, I think, has learned from the beginning of this at bat and is going to be a lot more speculative when it comes to the strike zone. The 2 2 fouled off once again. So Danny Miller doing a lot to hang. She's fouled it off in both directions. And with the exception of one swing, this is a pretty good at bat from Miller. The catcher, Casey Madden, going to go out and have a word with her pitcher. Danny Miller will go talk things over flurry, with Deanna Gump. You know what, now she won't do it because she's soft flurry, so don't look for flurry, okay? You just tap the pitch. And you wonder, Mike, if they're trying to guess what pitch is going to be thrown or if it's, it's going to be something where it's a Pete Rose type deal where you see it and hit it. Lindley winds and fires the 2-2. That one flying into center. The center fielder, Mine High Charging, will make the catch. And that will retire the side, but not before the Irish pick up a pair of runs on three hits. There were no errors. They leave two on base through three complete at Melissa Cook Stadium. It's Notre Dame 2, Rutgers nothing. This is Fighting Irish Softball on UND.com. 